Oh, yes. That on the cross, my good and deadly Oh, yes. He bled and died to take away my sins. Then sing my souls, my Savior God today. How great thou art. How great thou art. Then sing my soul. Oh, yes. Thou art. How great thou art. When Christ shall come. We shout of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall find in humble adoration. Then proclaim, My God, how great thou art. Then sing my soul. Oh, yes. How great thou art. Then sing my soul. You are welcome to Biran Academy tonight. The Wednesday Bible teaching. Coming from Christ Apostolic Church, Vineyard of Comfort, Calgary Assembly. You are highly welcome to Biran Academy. God bless you as you are giving like. Please, we encourage you as you are coming in, you can be pressing like. And if you are privileged, you can be sharing with your friends, your neighbor, far and near. Tonight again, I believe by the help of the Holy Spirit, the word of God will come to us fresh and it will enrich our souls. In Jesus' mighty name. You are welcome. Be low strong. Oh, yes. Water, Rama, thou hast taught me to say, It is well, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with. God bless you as you are coming in. It is well with your soul. It is well with my soul. It is well with our soul. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. mm. God bless you as you are welcome, as you are coming in. We welcome you to Biran Academy tonight. God bless you as you are coming in. If you are privileged again, we can be pressing like. God bless you. Bless you as you are coming in. We are going to start in the next one minute. Have your Bible with you. Have your note with you if you are privileged. For I know tonight again the Spirit of God will help us to understand what the Spirit is saying to the churches today. God bless you. In the next one minute we are going to start. Amen. It is well with my soul. Thank you. 
Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Yes. The purchase of God, born of his spirit, washing his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. All that day long, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all that day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior, I am happy and blessed, watching and praying. Looking above, God bless you as you are coming. Filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, yo. Ah, Lord of the Lord. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior, God of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is my story. This is my song. Praising the Lord all that day long. It is my prayer that among them that will keep praising him without being tired, without being wearied, when this body of flesh will give way, you and myself, we shall not be found wanting in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray one more time. At that period of time, when praising the Lord will be the sole activities of the saint, when the body of flesh will be gone, I pray that you and myself will be counted among them in the name of Jesus Christ. To God be the glory for his faithfulness in bringing us to the seventh month of the year 2022 in peace and not in pieces. Right here in our congregation, we have enjoyed the faithfulness of God. No one is missing, no one is lost. Not because we are faithful, but because God is faithful. God has promised and is watching over his word over our lives. And to him alone this evening again, be all the glory, honor, and adoration in the name of Jesus. Likewise, we want to thank God for your life, that you are still among the living. That is why you can join a teaching session like this, and that is why you can watch a biblical exposition like this, is simply because you are among the living. It is our prayer that God, whom has kept you to be among the living, in this second half of the year, we watch over his word to be performed in your life, in your family, in your career, and all that pertains to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Without much ado, we are glad to come back to Birian Seminar after two or three weeks of spending time to pray and to make intercession and to make our supplication known to the Lord. And I pray with us one more time, all that we have put before God in prayers, as individual and collectively as a congregation, with, with speed faster than light, God of heaven will answer us, and we shall live to testify of those answers to the glory of his name, in Jesus' mighty name. Once again, I welcome you to Berean Academy. But adventure, you are just joining us. This is Berean Academy, the Wednesday Bible teaching coming to you from Christ Apostolic Church, Vineyard of Comfort, Calgary Assembly. It is our prayer that as you join us to peruse the pages of the scriptures again tonight, Holy Spirit, who inspired the apostles and the prophets, will also be our own enlightenment that through his word again tonight, 
our lives and our journey of Christian faith will not remain the same in Jesus' name. Once again, welcome to Biran Academy. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bless your holy name for your faithfulness, crossing us to the second half of the year 2022 in peace and not in pieces, and giving us the grace again that we may come to your feet to learn tonight. Lord, we confess that on our own we can do but nothing. But I pray that by the help of your spirit, both the preacher and the hearer of the word of tonight, you will minister to us and our faith in you will be stronger and better than it was in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. People of God, once again, you are welcome to Biran Academy. You might have seen it on our YouTube. Tonight, we are going to be looking at the subject that says, my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is not of this world. Now, let me begin by saying this. There are many sayings of Jesus Christ. There are many things that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, said in the word of God. Most importantly, in the gospel, Matthew 5, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But to my amazement, many of us, even including those of us on the pulpit, we are not all that conversant with the sayings of Jesus Christ. We are living in the age and time, an average church person only knows what his pastor said, he knows what his geo said, is know what his papa said, what his bishop said. But consciously or unconsciously, have little or no knowledge of what Jesus said. So when we are talking about the sayings of Jesus Christ, people of God, I want you to note, it is something that you're supposed to labor on. And I'm going to tell you one practical example of what I'm trying to say as an introduction. You know, even people who don't go to church, I have heard them saying this, doesn't Jesus say that you Christian, you should not judge? Is it not in the Bible that you should not judge? So once upon a time, somebody was saying that, and she was saying it conveniently. She was saying that comfortably. But thank God, somebody also who knows what Jesus said, now said to the person, I said, come. In the Bible, Jesus said, John chapter 7 and verse 24. I'm going to read that one. John 7 and verse 24. Jesus said, stop judging by mere appearances and make a right judgment. Make a right judgment. You know, when this passage was shown to the person who was saying that the Bible said we should not judge, you know, the response is like, I never knew Jesus said something like that. I only thought that what Jesus said that we should not judge. Now, I gave you that illustration to let you know the reason why if you call yourself a Christian in this age and time, you have no excuse to be ignorant of the sayings of Jesus Christ. Because if I'll be honest with you, many people in the churches today are ignorant of what Jesus said. Permit me to remind you, I told you before, somebody who was pastoring the largest church in the U.S. openly confessed he never knew that Jesus said, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He said he never knew Jesus said anything like that. And yet this is somebody who is pastoring the largest church. So what am I trying to tell you in the beginning of this teaching? Because the subject I want to discuss with you was one of the sayings of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. So there is nothing a pastor, a bishop, an apostle, a prophet can say that can contradict that. But let me continue to charge you first and foremost. Please, 
be conversant with the sayings of Jesus. We are living in the age and time that a pastor can write a book. Listen to me, he wrote a book as voluminous as more than 150 pages. And from page zero to the page end, there was no mentioning of the name Jesus in the book. And yet this is a book written by a pastor. And this is a book that was sold in millions of copies. People are no longer familiar with what Jesus said. That's just what I'm trying to pass across. So if you call yourself a Christian, listening to me, please embrace this challenge again. Familiarize yourself with the sayings of Jesus, with the teachings of Jesus. It's going to save you a lot in this age and time where there are many psychology coming into the pulpit instead of Bible. But if you yourself, you are ignorant of what Jesus says, you may be hearing things that will, that will look, that will sound pragmatic, practical, relevant, sociable. But let me be honest with you. As long as it is not said by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it is a sinking sand. It will not be able to hold you on the day of your temptation. On the day when the rain will fall, when the, when the wind will blow, according to Matthew chapter 7, also the saying of Christ Jesus. So first and foremost, brothers and sisters listening to me tonight, I'm giving you this challenge. Most importantly, in this second half of the year, familiarize yourself with the sayings of Jesus Christ. Let's go back to our teaching tonight. John chapter 18 and verse 36. That is where it is taken from. John chapter 18, Gospel of John chapter 18, verse 36. The Bible says, I'm reading from NIV. Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servant will fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. The saying of Jesus Christ. So without much ado, Jesus said his own kingdom, his own empire, whatever you want to call it, is not of this world. Yeah, that again. My kingdom is not of this world. That is, what I am going to rule over, what I'm going to be in control of, what and what will be subject to me is not of this world. Now, before I interpret this verse of the scripture, I want to show you something. When Jesus said his kingdom is not of this world, do you know, as I read the scripture, I saw the proof. Jesus actually proved it. Not that he just said it. He proved it that his kingdom is not of this world. Let me show you the proof. Stay in the same Gospel of John chapter 6. Gospel of John chapter 6 and verses... John chapter 6. I read from verse 14 and 15. Gospel of John chapter 6, verses 14 and 15. I want us to see the proof of that saying that his kingdom is not of this world. John 6, verses 14 and 15. It says, after the people saw the miraculous sign that Jesus did, they saw his exploit. Like we say, those who know their God will do exploit. They saw the exploit Jesus did. Not only that, they said, they began that Jesus did, they began to say, surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. This is the person who is to come into the world. Come into the world to do what? To rule the world, to reign over this world. Listen to me. When they saw the miraculous sign Jesus did, and I said, when they saw the exploit, when they saw the manifestation. You see, when they saw everything that he did, the Bible says they came 
And they were saying that this is the prophet that is to come to the world. Now look at what happened in verse 15. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force. They intended to come and make him king by force. We drew again to a mountain by himself. Jesus ran away from them to the mountain. Please, don't forget where we are coming from. Jesus said his kingdom is not of this world. John 18, 36. But I'm trying to show you that Jesus did not just say it. He proved it. He proved it in the sense that when people saw the miraculous sign he did, People wanted to make him king. They want to make him the emperor. They want to make him the ruler. They want to make him the president. They want to make him the prime minister. Whatever title they are using in your part of the world. They want to make him the ruler. But because Jesus, what he said, he meant it. The Bible said he ran away from them. Because his kingdom is not of this world. He ran away. Not because he didn't do exploits to worth it, but because he knew his, kin his own kingdom is not of this world. Now, brothers and sisters, you need to ask me, what does that have to do with you and myself? Very simple. You and myself, we claim to be following no one else but Jesus Christ. Yamin again, our claim is that we are following Jesus Christ. And I'm showing you now that Jesus Christ, whom we are following, said his kingdom is not of this world. Not only that he said it, he proved it, that his kingdom was not actually of this world. What, is, what does that mean for you and myself? Number one, it means this. Jesus was not seeking the honor that comes from the world. Even though he did what merited it. Yeah, that's right. He did what merits the honor of this world. The signs and wonders he did, the poor that he fed, the healing that he performed, all those won merit the honor the world could offer. All those won merit the honor the society in which he lived offer. And according to John chapter 6, verses 14 to 15, the society actually wanted to offer him the honor. They want to give him, they want to make him king, even on the platter of gold. But you know what? Jesus Christ rejected it. Let me say this to you, brothers and sisters. If you profess to be following Christ, please, from this two verses of the scripture or three verses of the scripture we are looking at. I want to charge you. No matter what you are doing, no matter the exploit, no matter the achievement that you are making in this world, let me tell you something. For your followership of Jesus Christ to be correct and be in alignment with his own, seek in your heart and with your life, the honor that comes from the Father and not from the world around you. And I'm going to tell you the reason why. Very simple and practical. Because the world around you and myself, who will call you king today, they will be the same group of people who say, persecute him tomorrow. As it happened to Jesus eventually. So, brothers and sisters listening to me, I believe God on your behalf. You will make exploits in life. You will make exploits in your career. You will make exploits in your profession. You will do things that will merit the world to say, let us honor this person. But let me charge you. Endeavor to be like your master. Who says, I don't need the honor that comes from the world. But I need the honor, I need the lifting, I need the glory that comes from the Father above. Because according to the teaching of Jesus Christ, 
In John chapter 5, you can see we are reading a lot of John today. John chapter 5 and verse 44. Gospel of John chapter 5 and verse 44. I read again here. Jesus said, how can you believe? How can you believe if you accept praise from one another, yet make no effort to obtain the praise that come from the only God? You don't make efforts to get the praise, the honor that come from the only God. You can see that teaching here. There is honor from the world. They wanted to bestow him on Christ. He rejected it. And Jesus was now teaching that if we don't seek the honor that comes from the only God, our belief may be questionable. He said, how will you believe if you only seek the honor that comes from men and you don't seek the honor that comes from the God only? So, brothers and sisters, the teaching says, said, my kingdom is not of this world. So, without missing words, having shared all this, let us now go back to the passage itself. John 18 and verse 36. Gospel of John 18, 36. Jesus said again, Jesus answered him, I read, Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servant will fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But my kingdom is from another place. Now, from this verse of the scripture, let me share with you a few things here. Jesus said, his kingdom is not of this world. You don't need to be a professor of theology to, to interpret that. There are kingdoms in this world, as I'm talking to you presently. <laughs> there are empires, there are presidents, there are prime ministers, there are kings in this world, as I'm talking presently. But Jesus said his own kingdom is not of this world. Now, what does that mean? It means, number one, for you and for me, who is following Christ? We need to understand this. No kingdom on earth is everlasting. Yeah, that again. I want to begin to tell you the implication of the statement of Christ. When Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world, what Jesus is saying, number one, most importantly to those of us following him, is that no kingdom on earth here is everlasting. Meaning, Never put your trust, your confidence in it. Yeah, that again. The first implication is that no kingdom on earth lasts forever. So you that you are following me, do not put your confidence or your trust in it. Now, let me show you the scripture to emphasize this truth. Look at it. First John, we are reading John, John too much today. First John chapter 2 and verse 17. Look at what it says. The book of 1 John chapter 2 and verse 17. The Bible says, The world and its desire pass away. No kingdom on earth here is everlasting. Jesus says the world, you can call it whatever name of the age, is passing away. Take for instance, the dark ages pass away. The age of the enlightenment pass away. So if we are in the age of internet now, it will also pass away. <laughs> the first implication for you and for me is that no kingdom of this earth is everlasting. Let me go to kingdoms. At least if we don't know much. Once upon a time, the Egyptians was the kingdom that is ruling the whole world. Where is Egypt today? Thank God, Egypt is still existing as a nation. Once upon a time, the Medo Persia, they were the kingdom ruling the world. Once upon a time, the Babylonians. Once upon a time, the Romans. Once upon a time, the British. And maybe today, America, Russia, China, here and there. 
But what Jesus is trying to tell us is that none of those kingdoms is everlasting. They will all pass away. Now, let me now be honest with you. It is not prophecy. It is simply a teaching of the word of God that every kingdom among men will not last forever. So if somebody says, oh, the Western world will soon pass over, it is written in the scripture. It's a matter of time. Everything goes in circle. And that's why Jesus said, his own kingdom is not of this world that we just go and hand. No. That's the first implication. So the world that you and myself are living in, let me remind you again as a child of God, is not everlasting. No matter the improvement, the beauty, no matter the infrastructure that we could see and enjoy in this world of today, it is something passing away. Now let me show you another passage of the scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 31. 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 31. 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 31. I read, those who use the things of this world as if not engrossed in them. For this world, in its present form, is passing away. <laughs> this world that you and myself, we are privileged to be living in it now. According to the scripture in your hand, 1 Corinthians 7, 31, is passing away. I want you to know why Jesus said his own kingdom is not of this world. Because the world that you and myself, we are used to and we are living in, is something that is passing away. Whatever name or title we give it, say, okay, we are in the world of information technology, is passing away. That's the implication of that saying, that my kingdom is not of this world. So that the present kingdom we are in is passing away. Let me show you one more passage of the scripture about that, and then we'll come to ourselves now. Hebrews 13 and verse 14. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 14. Look at Hebrews 13 and verse 14. It says, For here, here mean this world that we are living in, we do not have an enduring city. We don't have a lasting city. We don't have an everlasting city. But we are looking for the city that is to come. I'm coming to that later. But the first thing is that here we don't have an enduring city. We don't have a lasting city. We don't have an everlasting city. That was why Jesus said to Pilate, Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world, not like your own that will soon pass away. When the Greek will overthrow the Romans or the Romans overthrow the Greek, so, people of God, the first implication of this saying of Jesus Christ, I have tried to explain scripturally, but for you and for me, with regards to our daily living, is that with all that is in this world, let us understand that the kingdom of Christ, which he has promised to you and me, is not of this world. There is nothing of this world and in this world compared with the kingdom of Christ. Now, don't let me now talk eschatologically. Let me come down. Let me come, don't let me talk eschatologically. Let me come down with regards to our daily living. Let's go back to that John now, John 18:6. You are going to see the kingdom of Christ invariant to the kingdom of the whole world that you and myself, we are living in. You are going to see something here. John 18, 36. I read it again. Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servant will fight. If I'm, if I'm in your show, I will underline the word fight. What was Jesus trying to say? Jesus was trying to tell Pilate and all other rulers of this world that one of the major distinctions 
or one of the major difference with regards to the kingdom of Christ and the kingdom of this world is that there is no fight. But you and I knew in the present kingdom of the world that we are living in, if there is no cold fight, <laughs> there is open fight. But in the kingdom of Christ, Jesus said, no fight. He said, if my, king, my servant will fight, but because my kingdom is not of this world, we don't fight. We don't fight. But in the kingdom of this world, you will fight for your right. Let me make somebody laugh. Thank God we have been saved. <laughs> Thank God I have been delivered. Thank God I have been redeemed. But before, I was foolish like others. Living with the standard of this word that will say, stand up, stand up, stand up for your right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> we do hear that. But in the kingdom of Christ, eh, we don't fight. But in the kingdom of this world, you fight for your right. And tell me, Nowhere in the world, either the Western world or the Northern world or the Eastern world, everybody fights for their right. That's a very clear indication that it is not the kingdom of Christ. People fight for position. People even fight for honor. People fight for respect. But you know what? In the kingdom of Christ, which is not of this world, one thing that you will not see there is that they don't fight. They don't fight. What is that to you and to me? Like I said, don't let me go too much eschatological. Let's go to let's come to the present day reality. Immediately inside of you there is tension towards somebody else. Immediately there is tension towards something. Let me be honest with you. If you are a child of God, check. Another kingdom is knocking at your door, which is not the kingdom of Christ. Because in the kingdom of Christ, Jesus said, my servants, they won't fight because my kingdom is not of this world. We don't fight. So that is to tell you, brothers and sisters, if there is a tension, if there is a fighting over anything whatsoever, it is an absence of the kingdom of Christ. Because in the kingdom of Christ, there is nothing to fight over. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servant also will fight because that is the way it is being done in the kingdom of the world. People fight for their right. People fight for themselves. People fight for their nation. People fight for their pride. People, people fight for everything. But in the kingdom of Christ, Jesus said, that's not the way it is. It's not like that in my own kingdom. And I'm saying to you and to myself, if we are following Christ, claiming that he is our example, brothers and sisters, fight, team, tension should be dying in us. If it has not died finally, let me give us that benefit of doubt, but sincerely speaking, it should be dying in us. <laughs> my kingdom is not of this world. Because the kingdom of this world, fighting, fighting, even businesses, fighting is their hallmark. But in the kingdom of Christ, peace is their hallmark. Peace is their hallmark. Peace is the hallmark of the kingdom of Christ. Fighting is the hallmark of the kingdom of men. 
Jesus said it to Pilate. Brothers and sisters listening to me tonight. If you are following Christ and you desire to live like him, let me tell you this before we move on. Fighting is the hallmark of the kingdom of this world. Peace is the hallmark of the kingdom of Christ. The choice is yours. That singular saying of Jesus, my kingdom is not of this world, it has implication. Not just in eternity, I mean as Catholic, but present time. His kingdom is a kingdom of peace, not of fighting. Let me move forward, people of God. <laughs> When Jesus said his kingdom is not of this world, what does it imply? Again, it implies something. Number two, it implies that we are to be looking towards that kingdom. We are to be looking for that kingdom. Because presently, that kingdom is not yet fully realized in you and in me, as I'm talking now, it's not yet fully realized. But when Jesus was saying his kingdom is not of the world, is, is not of this world, it means we should be looking and longing for that kingdom. Let me show you this. Many of us we enjoy the teaching of faith, which is sound and needful. Many of us we celebrate the accomplishment of the people of faith which is sound and biblical. But let us read the life of the people of faith with regards to the issue of the kingdom, my kingdom is not of this world. Look at the book of Hebrews chapter 11. That is where you have the record of the people of faith with great exploit and great manifestation. But let us look at what the Bible says with regards to the way they live their life. I know we are conversant with the exploit that they did. But let me tell you something. Maybe you can keep this, Bible study student. There is no exploit done by anybody in the kingdom of God that he himself has credit for. God alone, who is the giver of that grace and power, must be credited for any and every exploit Anyone does in the kingdom of God. I have shared that with us in this congregation. When Peter and John, when they raised a lame man in Acts of the Apostles chapter 3, and people were looking at them, people were, there was jubilation and celebration. Peter, Peter, come, 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 come. Why are you guys looking at us as if we are special people? It is not by our power, it is not by our righteousness we have healed this lame man. Because in the New Testament, they understand that. That no matter what God, exploit God use somebody to do, in this kingdom, it is not to your own credit. It is the, to the credit of him who is using you to do it. But don't mind. You may be claiming the credit. You know the implication. You are only disobeying God, who says his glory will not share with any man. Nor his praise be given to give, no his, no his praise be given to graven image. So when we are talking about the people of faith, I know we are so much interested about their exploit. Their exploit, the credit for their exploit belongs to God, not to them. I'm sharing that because of the Bible study student we have in our congregation here. The credit for their exploit goes to God, hundred percent, hundred. Because the last thing God will share with any man is his glory, is his praise. The praise that belongs to him, he doesn't share that. Now, but let's go to what I mean by the way they live with regards to the kingdom. I'm going to read Hebrews chapter 11. 
These are very popular verses of the scriptures. I read from verse 11, Hebrews 11 from verse 11. I will read a very long verse, but permit me, just listen very well. The Bible says, By faith Abraham, even though he was past age and Sarah herself was barren, was enabled to become father because he considered him faithful who had made a promise. Now, let me jump to verse 13 because of time. Okay, sorry, please. Let me read from verse 8 so that I don't take much of your time. Verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as an inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. He didn't know where he was going, but he was obeying. That's another lesson for another day. That in the journey of the Christian faith, obedience, even when you do not know what God is saying, is better. It says, yeah, by faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tent, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. And verse 10, for he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. Hallelujah. You know, I'm showing you, look at the way they lived their life. The Bible says, even in the promised land, they live like a stranger. <laughs> they live like a stranger because they knew that the kingdom of Christ is not of this world. You know, I'm trying to show us the implication of that statement of Christ with regards to us. When Jesus says his kingdom is not of this world, what he's saying directly to you and to me is what Father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob practice here, living like a stranger, even in a promised land. To the extent that the Bible went as far as saying that they were living in tent. Tent. Not that there were no mansion in those days. There were. Not that there were no houses built with bricks in those days. Bricks house have been developed even hundreds of years before that time. As far back as Genesis 11, men have already known how to use bricks to build houses. But the Bible says, Father Abraham, with all the wealth that we knew that he has, with all the blessing that God gave to him, he was living in tent. What does that mean? Don't the pastor is asking you to go and cut grass and make it your house. No. What it means that he was living with so much simplicity and consciousness that where they were, is not the kingdom that God has promised to them. And that's why the Bible now justifies it for us in verse 10 that they were looking forward to a city with foundation. Not that they were not living in the city before, and most importantly in the promised land. So it implies for you and for me, when Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world, it implied that we should be looking forward to that kingdom. Though we are living in this world as at now, like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they were living in the promised land, but they were looking forward to a city with foundation. They were looking forward to the kingdom of Christ. Why they were living in the kingdom of Canaan. Let me call, let me use the old mouth now. They were living in the kingdom of Canaan, but looking Forward to the kingdom of God. I don't know if you get that. So which means, as you and myself, we are living in this world, whichever kingdom you are living. If you are living in the kingdom of Canada, you are living in the kingdom of America, kingdom of Britain, whichever, all over the world. It is not sinful. It is biblical. But to be like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is living in that kingdom, but looking forward 
to the kingdom of Christ, which is not of this world. I hope you can see what I'm trying to say here. But to the best of my knowledge, I don't know how many of us believers, including those of us who are preachers, have that consciousness again. With due respect to all the brothers and sisters online today, and those of us in the church, I used to know that the consciousness for the kingdom of Christ, the kingdom that is coming, used to be a very important subject in the life of believers many years ago. Even used to be an important subject on the pulpit by the preachers many years ago. But if I will confess, and I'm begging God that God will deliver us today, all that is concerning us from the pulpit and to those of us who are in the church is about the kingdom of this world, which Jesus said is not his own kingdom, which I have also told us in the beginning of this teaching is passing away. So why will you now put your life on what is passing away? Can you see Father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob here in this Hebrews 11, 8 to 10? They did not, even though they were living in Canaan, their life was so simple and their consciousness was so sharp about the kingdom that is coming, a city with foundation whose architect and builder is God. People of God, one of the things, if not that we have lost it completely, in our Christian faith, as individual and as a church, is a consciousness that we have a kingdom that is not of this world. Pastor, what are you saying? If we are able to revive that consciousness in our own lives as individual and in our congregation as a whole, I tell you the truth, the way we live our lives will be completely different from the way we are living it now. The example is there before us. Because Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because they were looking forward to a city with foundation, whose builder and architect, whose architect and builder is God. You can see the way they were living in Canaan. They said they lived there like a stranger in a promised land. Is because of what they were looking forward. That was what affected the way they were living presently. And if I will be honest with you, the way we are living our life presently, most importantly, those of us who profess to be followers of Christ, is a betrayer that we are looking forward to some to a kingdom that is to come. What do I mean by that? Let's go back to what Jesus said. You can, you can know how fighting is going on among us. He shows that we are not looking for something up there. Look at how materially conscious, materially possessive that we have become. People of God, let me be honest. As an individual, I want to charge you. The reason why this exposition is coming your way is one thing, that there may be a revival, there will be a quickening of the kingdom of Christ in your own heart. There may be a quickening, there may be an awakening of that kingdom of Christ in your own heart, which is not of this world. Because I know, if that consciousness is restoring to our heart and into our life as a whole, the way we live in this present world will change. There will be transformation. At times, we will step to transformation. There are no steps. Keys to transformation. There are no key anywhere. You can live a life that is different from the world in which you are living if your consciousness is about the kingdom of Christ that he said is not of this world. The way you are living your life will change by itself. So the problem we all have is that that consciousness 
If it has not gone, it is going gradually. And that's why I said the saying of Christ, make sure that you are conversant with them. Because in all our churches today, Satan has succeeded to send in a lot of teachers and preachers that all they will tell us is about the kingdom of this world. Even one of our sisters shared it with me that she saw, she saw it, she watched the video as a, when a preacher with a large congregation was telling his church, if you say you are looking forward to the coming of Christ, you are wasting your time and the people are dancing and rejoicing. That is just a tip of the iceberg. If I will be honest with you, the worst to that is coming. And I'm not a prophet. Don't think I'm prophesying. But that is just the truth of the scriptures. But for you and for me, let us revive that consciousness. Let's remember what Jesus said, that his kingdom is not of this world. And if you will help yourself, keep reminding you of Reminding yourself of that. And if you, if you will help your pastor, I venture those of you who are members of this congregation, pray for him to always remind you of that. Because there is tendency to forget we are human. Yes. Pray that God will make him to always remind you. And on the other hand, pray that God will save you from those who will never remind you that the kingdom of Christ unto whom you have come to follow and to be like him is not of this world. Brothers and sisters, it is the saying of Christ. His kingdom is not of this world. That's why I used to say it. When I have privilege with people one and one, we talk about Christian in politics, Christian in business, Christian in this. The kingdom of Christ is not of this world. Jesus has nothing to do with the uh, aviation industry. He has nothing to do with all this so-called, uh, any industry whatsoever. Because his kingdom is not of this world. <laughs> his kingdom is not. And don't say that, oh, how are we going to change the world then? People of God, let nobody deceive you. Christianity changed the world in a better way than going into all these things. Permit me to share this with you again. If you are a good student of the Bible and you want to understand, go and read Acts of the Apostles. How does the apostle, how does the early Christian change the world of their time? The Bible even said that they accused them of turning the world upside down. If you want to understand that, go and see the conversion of the Ephesian church. Act of the Apostle chapter 18, chapter 19. The Bible says when the people got, when they got converted in Ephesus, many of them threw away their gods, they threw away their idols. And by throwing away their gods and idols, it affected the business of those who were making those idols, the silversmith, the goldsmith, those who are in that trade. Believers throwing away those idols to the extent that those who are in that business knew that, oh, something has happened in this city. Something has happened in this city. Business is no longer going on smoothly. We are no longer making money. They say, why? I mean, I'm talking from Acts chapter 18 and verse 19 now, chapter 19. They say it's because Apostle Paul was preaching and people was believing him and they were throwing away their idols. And by that, the entire city of Ephesus was transformed. It was not because Christians became the judge in Ephesus that Ephesus transformed. No, neither was it because they became a mayor. No, but because when they give their life to Christ, they threw away the gods and the idols of Ephesus from their lives. And the entire city of Ephesus knew a change has come. I used to say to people one and one, I said, there are many things that could change in the world today without any campaign, without any political lobby. Let me say this. Thank God we are speaking online now. The whole world can hear it. 
Look at the porn industry, the pornographic industry that they said is in multi-billion dollars. That industry can die within a space of one month. Pastor, how? Very simple. Let everyone who profess to be going to church, let those who profess to be calling themselves pastor, let those who profess to be Christian, let them stop that habit. I tell you the truth, the pornography industry will suffer. They will suffer losses. It's a very simple thing. But we are living in the age and time when they will be telling you many pastors are into pornography and you not say you want to change that by political campaign. Never. Let those who profess to be Christian, let them desist from that. I tell you the truth. Within a space of one month, pornography industry, will they will declare bankruptcy. They will declare bankruptcy. And the same that because that's what happened in Ephesus. I'm not picking, I'm not making it up. Those who gave their life to Christ in Ephesus, they burnt all the magic book, they threw away all those idols that they gave them, and the industry that was making those things, they fetched the losses immediately. They fetched the losses to the extent that it led to the persecution of Apostle Paul and the Christian in that city. Because the effect was so great, they were losing their business and profiting. Likewise, in this age and time, that's why I don't join political campaign. Because that's not, that's not the way Christianity affected the world. It affects the world. When you, that you are hearing me now, you understand that the kingdom of Christ is not of this world. So the things of this world should not be your Lord, should not be your master, should not be your motivation. May the Lord give us understanding. I'm going to stop here because of time. But let me remind you, be conversant with the saying of Jesus Christ. My kingdom is not of this world. Jesus said it. And you don't need to be a professor to understand that. May the Spirit of God, who inspired the prophet and the apostles, beyond the word of my mouth and the explanation I could give, help you to comprehend this truth. Not just to comprehend it, to live in the consciousness of it and to see the proof and the transformation it will accomplish in your own life. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. People of God, this we are the Biran Academy for tonight with us. We look forward to having it again as the Lord gave us the opportunity. But regularly, every Wednesday evening, 7.30 to 8.30. Our next meeting is on Saturday. Is our regular monthly program, Mount Carmel Prayer Hour. It is on grand. It is not just online. It is online for those who are far away. But if you are here in the city of Calgary, I expect you, I encourage you to join us on grand in the church here. 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Mount Carmel Prayer Hour. It's a moment of praying and making our petition known to God. And as we come and as we share it with others, the Lord will bless us all in Jesus' name. Until we come again together, on ground and online, remain blessed in Jesus' name. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. You are blessed in Jesus' name.